The life of an electronic is not one we normally consider. We use it, and then when it breaks or a newer model comes out, we simply discard it, with no thought to where that cast off may end up. There's a good chance it travels halfway across the world, sometimes illegally, and ends up in Guiyu, China. The city of Guiyu is located in the Guangdong province, and it consists of four adjoining villages, totaling a population of 150,000 people. In 2013, it was recognized as the world's largest e-waste site. E-waste, or electronic waste, is defined as discarded electronic devices. This includes everything from old photocopiers, refrigerators, to the latest model of the iPhone. Globally, as of 2016, there was 44.7 million metric tons of e-waste produced. And of this 44.7 million metric tons, 80% of it went undocumented. That means it wasn't tracked and how it was recycled is unknown. One of the major concerns surrounding this issue is that there's minimal legislation and minimal tracking of this kind of waste. As of 2016, only 41 countries have official e-waste statistics, and furthermore, as of 2017, only 66% of the world's countries have e-waste legislation. The implication being that the waste is unregulated and not handled properly, and therefore can lead to many different kinds of threats. Not only is e-waste an environmental hot topic, it is also an economic one. The raw materials that can be salvaged and recycled from e-waste in 2016 contained an estimated worth of 55 billion euros. Wii U and China have been one of the world's largest players in the disposal of e-waste since before the beginning of the millennium. Not only are they one of the largest producers of technology, but they're also one of the largest consumers. In 2000, the country banned the import of e-waste due to the high levels they were facing domestically. Statistics show that they face an annual increase of 20% in e-waste every year. Furthermore, it handles about 70% of the e-waste generated globally. This puts a huge economic, social, and environmental burden on the country. Far more importantly, it has caused a modern disaster that has impacted the lives of everyone in Guiyu. We will now take a closer look at those environmental impacts. We are all a product of our environment. The goal is not to make an environment out of our products. Was that thoughtful and inspirational? Well, I pulled it off Google. Do you want to know what else I pulled off Google? This. Let's start with a mountain of electronics that fills up landfills in Guyu. Primitive methods used for e-waste recycling include mechanical shredding, open burning of plastics and wires, and acid leaching of printed circuit boards. These release hazardous chemicals such as PAH, PBDE, PCDD, PCDF, and other heavy metals such as chromium, copper, and lead. Was that too many acronyms and too much chemistry? All you need to remember is that these chemicals cause pollution in the air, dust, water, river, and soil in Guyu. Let's break this down. Number one, water. We asked our cameraman, Mike, to try some water from the streams of Guyu. All right, Shrews, I don't know why you want me to drink this. Mm. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh, what is this? Why is it black? Well, Mike, this is water from the streams of Guyu. It's black and filled with industrial waste. In fact, the water can get so acidic that it can disintegrate a penny in a matter of a few hours. Number two, air. Cue to the weather report. Wind patterns in Southeast China continue to be strong. This means that dispersing toxic particles can become that much easier. The air is full of high concentration of atmospheric dioxins, PBDEs, chromium, copper, and zinc. In fact, the concentration of these metals found in the air are about 4.3 times higher than those found in other Asian metropolitan cities, such as Tokyo, Shanghai, Ho Chi Minh, and Seoul. Number three, soil. Landfill leaching and acid rain deposition enables e-waste contaminants to enter the soil crop food pathway. Be careful what you eat is an understatement for the citizens in Guyu. Of course, these chemicals are non-biodegradable, which means they will stay in the environment for long periods of time. 
And now, time to hear from our health expert. I'm also the local health expert. So there's a lot of different chemical agents that you could be exposed to that can be emitted during the e-waste process. In a lot of these cases, exposure to some of these agents can cause some pretty severe health effects. For PDBEs, studies have shown that children in GUI have higher levels of thyroid stimulating hormone in their blood, which can indicate an overactive thyroid. This can cause anxiety, hyperactivity, and weight loss. Another big problem is heavy metal exposure, where it's been found that Guyu has elevated levels of quite a few of them. One of the most concerning ones is lead, and multiple studies have shown elevated blood lead levels in the citizens of Guyu. Children in Guyu have shown to have reduced mental development with lower cognitive and language scores, all of which could be potentially linked to lead. Lead toxicity in general does horrible things to your body. Our red blood cells have a high affinity for lead, where it can bind directly to the cell membrane, leading to increased permeability and eventual hemolysis. That'll leave you with a serious case of anemia. Another big issue is that lead in our body can lead to cell and DNA damage through free radical production. While our body produces reactive oxygen species through natural metabolic processes, too many are dangerous. One of the main ways lead can do this is through its effect on glutathione production, which is an important antioxidant. It does this by inhibiting two important enzymes, aminolevolunic acid dehydrogenase and glutathione reductase. Inhibition of LAAD leads to decreased heme production while increasing ALA levels, which stimulates reactive oxygen species production. GR inhibition leads to less glutathione produced, which leaves the body with one less antioxidant to get rid of all that extra reactive oxygen species swimming around. In kids who still don't have a fully developed blood-brain barrier, lead can travel up to the brain and damage brain cells, which could explain some of the observed developmental delays. And now into some possible solutions on how we can actually fix this e-waste problem. From 2000 to 2013, conditions in GUI remain the same, despite government attempts to enforce a long-standing e-waste import ban. However, as public awareness grew and the health and environmental impacts associated with e-waste in GUI became more, more and more evident, the situation became too urgent to ignore. In 2013, the regional government approved a plan to move all of GUIU's workshops into an industrial park, which became operational in December 2015. More than 1,200 workshops moved into the park, which cost US $233 million to build. All the recycling workshops that refused to move were shut down. This consolidation of e-waste processing areas has caused substantial environmental improvement and air quality improvement, but the problem is nowhere close to being solved. Several things still need to be done in Guyu. Extensive remediation efforts are needed to clean up the heavy metal contamination in land areas historically used for processing, and the Beigang River will need to be cleaned up so that the water quality is improved. The regulations against illegal imports of e-waste will need to be more strictly enforced, and more rules on how and how much e-waste can be recycled will need to be created. Finally, major e-waste associated health effects such as lead poisoning will continue to be a problem for Chinese citizens well into the future and treatment plans and funding for these plans will need to be arranged by the Chinese government. Locally, in North America, we have an obligation to change our practices as we have historically been a major source of the electronics that are now polluting Guiyu. Canadian and U.S. governments will need to create policies regulating the use of certain toxic substances in their products. Governments must increase penalties for exporting electronic waste and must make local companies more accountable for their recycling processes. And a final crucial aspect of this will be to inform the public on proper electronic waste recycling. To demonstrate the current lack of knowledge on this topic, we asked some people, what do you think happens to your electronic waste after it's thrown out? Um, I would say that if it's thrown out, it probably goes into a landfill somewhere and since it won't decompose, it just kind of sits there for a million years until some animal eats it and dies. Um, or if it's recycled, maybe they like separate it into the different parts that can or can't be recycled. 
and then for the parts that can be recycled they recycle it and for the parts that can't be they don't and then kind of the same thing happens as if you just threw it away in the first place but at least it's killing less animals and whereabouts on the world do you think that the recycling happens or it would get thrown out where i i would say that it probably gets thrown out anywhere but if it's recycled maybe it all goes to one place because not that many places recycle tech specifically so it'd probably be like a special recycling place that takes apart the tech and knows how to recycle it but would you say a phone thrown out in canada would stay in canada generally if it was thrown into the garbage <laughs> yeah probably okay. thank you very much in canada there are over 2300 recycle my electronics authorized collection locations which use accountable recycling companies that use safe and ethical practices to recycle electronics. The e-waste recycling problem in Guyu, China is a massive disaster and has been historically poorly managed, massively worsened with time, and has great impacts on not only environmental health, but also human health. However, with policy reforms to control e-waste import and update recycling practices, the future of this region is looking much brighter. Guyu China may not hold the title for the world's largest e-waste site for much longer. And that's our e-waste report from Bio3HD3 News. 